Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Um, Today is the the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany, which means uh, it is the transfiguration of our Lord. Um, And then this this Wednesday um, marks the beginning of Lent. So uh, again, today's the transfiguration of our Lord. We will also be celebrating Holy Communion. um, And that Two reasons. Well, the main reason is because last week we were closed. <laughs> um, so we just moved Communion Sunday to this week. But it's also very fitting because this is a, is a festival day of the church with the Transfiguration. And then this Wednesday, um, we will be having a worship service for Ash Wednesday. Um, so that will be at 7 o'clock here at the church. Uh, we will be having... A, the imposition of ashes for those who like ashes. Um, I'll do that just slightly different um, from last year uh, because of the COVID restrictions. But um, we will have ashes and we will also have Holy Communion too, being a festival day, uh, which again it marks the beginning of the season of, uh, of Lent. of Lent. So that's this Wednesday. So if you can... Uh, join us, please do, and I believe we're still planning on uh, recording the service and having that on our YouTube channel. And then also uh, this week, this this week, um, well, Bible study comes back in two weeks. So the if the actual first class will be on Thursday, February twenty fifth. Um, But we are going to have, we're going to offer it on Zoom, so you can either come to the church for the class, but there will be like a camera that will be on me. And it won't be, it's not really recorded, it's live streamed on Zoom. So people can access it at home, either on their computer or on their phone. Uh, But if you would like to participate in Zoom, uh, please let me know because I'll add um, you to the email list so I, you get get the information for the Zoom meeting. And, um, and even if you're planning to come in person, but, um, you know, you think, well, maybe one week um, because of the weather or maybe you're not feeling 100%, you'd want to participate in Zoom, on Zoom, you know, just let me know. I can, you know... C- keep you on that email list, and then you, we'll send out the invitation each week, and then you can make the decision on whether if you want to come to the church or participate on the computer. So um, so anyone who'd like to, uh, you know, possibly participate uh, using Zoom, just please let me know. We'll have a practice Zoom meeting this Thursday. So it'll be a short meeting, but since it's our first time, we just want to practice make sure that we can connect and see each other and hear each other. And then, like I say, the the following week we'll have our first actual class, and we're studying the Book of Romans. Uh, So that that should be a very interesting uh, uh, study. So that's coming up, and I think that's about it. Are there any other um, announcements for the good of the congregation? Anything I forgot? Okay, well then we prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude.
I invite the congregation to please rise. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son, and illuminate the, illuminate the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. 
The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively Psalm 50, <coughs> verses 1 through 6. The mighty one, God the Lord has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. O Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence, with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the righteousness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. The second reading is from Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let the light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. <clears throat> Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had arisen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Please be seated. And let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 
For many organizations and businesses, there's a real emphasis placed on having some kind of chosen successor. The idea is that for a, a smooth transition of power to occur, that it's important to train someone to take over the operation. In some congregations, this belief of having a leader in training is, is used by the church council. So when church councils hold their elections uh, for church officers, that they will often start with the easier ones first. Usually that's the treasurer, because as many of you know, as once someone is elected treasurer, they normally have that position until they resign. So most years, that's an easy one. And then after that, they, they often elect someone to be secretary, which is normally easier to fill than the president and vice president. Well, many church councils will then try to elect someone who's fairly new on council to serve, on, to serve as vice president. And the idea is that they will eventually be elected president. And then the president is normally someone who has served as vice president and has two or three years of council experience. Again, the goal is to try to train the next council president so that they're prepared for that leadership role. The idea of having a successor or a group of successors to continue the work of someone, of someone else, is as old as the Bible. We see it clearly in our first lesson where we are told how Elijah was taken into heaven, leaving his protege, Elisha to succeed him as headmaster for a group of prophets in training. We see Elisha's devotion to his mentor in this lesson in a couple of different ways. As they were traveling, Elisha would not leave Elijah's side, even though Elijah tells him three times to stay behind. Each time Elisha tells Elijah, each time Elijah tells Elisha to stay behind, Elisha responds by saying, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. Then once Elijah is taken into heaven, Elisha very visibly shows his grief by grasping his clothes and tearing them into two pieces. It is believed that Elisha spent six or seven years training with Elijah and in order to train under Elijah, Elisha had to leave his occupation and his family behind. Elisha was a good student, and he truly was a faithful servant of the Lord. Unlike those who are looking for earthly power or fame, Elisha was not someone trying to take over from his mentor before the appropriate time. He was never trying to push, push his mentor aside. Instead, Elisha stayed with his mentor even when the other men of the company of prophets stood at a distance. Elisha was also deeply grieved that Elijah was no longer with him on earth. Again, this was a man who could, this was a man who could not, this was, I'm sorry, this was not a man. This was not a man who couldn't wait to take over. Instead, he was happy to learn from someone who knew more than him and to take over when God said the time was right. So it gave the student who was happy to learn from someone who knew more than him and he was happy to take over when God said the time was right. And we see that Elisha was rewarded for his faithfulness. In our lesson for today, Elisha is able to perform a miracle by parting the Jordan River. Then God allows Elisha to receive a double share of Elijah's spirit. And if we keep reading, we will find Elisha performing other miracles, such as making bad water clean so that people can drink from it. He raises a dead child. He multiplies barley loaves and he cures lepers. Now, Elisha will not be the last person that will be trained to do God's work here on earth. In fact, he's an important servant of God 
in a long line of trained servants. Many years after Elijah's death, three men named Peter, James, and John will be trained to become servants of God. Now, Peter, James, and John had an even greater mentor than Elisha had. These three men were trained by the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And although, as we re read in our gospel lesson, they, they did have the opportunity to meet Elisha's mentor, Elijah, but, all, but unlike Elisha, they were also able to meet Moses, which was just incredible. How what? It's not too often that you're able to meet anyone who had lived a long time ago, but these, these men did. Well, these men are similar to Elisha in many ways. Like Elisha, they had to leave their previous occupation behind. They also had to leave their parents behind. And like Elisha, these men did not want their mentor to leave them. Although with J uh, Peter, James, and John, they did not fully understand the mission of Jesus, this moment on top of a mountain is meant to prove to them that Jesus is truly their teacher and their Lord. Not only do these men meet two dead guys, Moses and Elijah, but they get a glimpse of Jesus and his heavenly glory. Jesus was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. At this moment, Peter, James, and John were in the presence of the Holy Trinity. Now, they probably did not completely understand that but I feel confident in saying that they knew that God was speaking to them, telling them that Jesus is his son and that they are to listen to him. After, they, after this occurred, they went back down the mountain where they were quickly greeted by the problems of this world. Eventually, eventually Jesus, like Elijah, will be taken into heaven, both body and soul, and his students, his protégés, would be tasked with continuing his mission. Now, Peter, James, and John, and the other nine disciples would not be the last people to be trained and then sent out to spread the word of God. In fact, every person, every person who has been either confirmed or gone through some kind of new member class, has also been trained and shares in the same mission as Peter, James, and John. We all have been trained, and we all share in that same mission. And we have been given the greatest mission possible, but we've also been given a difficult mission. In our second lesson, St. Paul informs us of the challenge that we face. He says, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So the God of this world that Paul is referring to is the devil. Now it's true, Jesus defeated the devil on the cross. But God allows the devil to continue to influence this world until he is finally locked away after Jesus returns. One of the reasons that God allows the devil to continue to influence our world is so that we human beings are offered a real choice. God has never taken away our free will. And God gives us the ability to follow the Holy Spirit or follow the devil. And as we all know, some people choose to follow the influence of the devil. 
we can point to many people in our world who have committed heinous crimes or people who have placed more importance on wealth or power or fame than following Jesus. Now, all of us give in to self all of us give in to our selfish desires on a regular basis. We're all sinners. But those who place their faith in Jesus are willing to confess their sins and truly try to repent where others will not. And that is the difference with those who embrace the light of Jesus and those who follow the God of this world. So how do we make sure we are not blinded by the God of this world? Well, one way is by following in the example of Elisha, Peter, James, and John. We should look at ourselves as students learning from God and from our fellow believers. And like them, we also need to remember that there are times when we become the teacher, helping others to know the light of the world, Jesus Christ. In our second lesson, St. Paul says, For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. We don't proclaim ourselves. We proclaim ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. You know, we can really tell how successful the men in our scripture lessons were. Because no one ever comes to church and, church and suggests that we should worship one or more of them. I've never had that happen. I've never had someone come to church and say, you know, we should worship Paul or Peter, James, and John. And nobody ever says that. And that's because all of them live lives that proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. And that needs to be our goal as well. We are servants of Jesus Christ. And we are to serve one another by helping others to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Again, our focus in life should be to always be proclaiming God and what God has done for us, for our world. Now, we all live, live busy lives, and I often say that, that we, as, no matter what, what field of work that we're in, uh, we, should, we should always be doing, doing our best. You know, if, we're in, um, if we work in, say, customer service or sales, we should try to excel at what we do. If we're if we're a farmer or a factory worker, or a healthcare worker, or a teacher, you, you name it, whatever it may be, we should try to do a good job. But no matter what we do in life, all, and, and all the things that we do in life, we should always remember to give God credit. I'll admit that I, do, I really appreciate if someone gives me a compliment here at the church. But I know that I would not be able to get up here each Sunday and talk about the Word of God without God's help. It is God who gives me the strength and the knowledge to preach His Word, and I always need to remind myself of that. I do need to remind myself of that. It can be difficult for all of us to fight the temptation to think that it's all about me. No matter what we may do, especially if we succeed at something, we often want to think it's all about me. But the truth is we all need God. We need to know that God is present in our lives. We need to know that God is our constant help. We need to know that we are all valued and loved by God. And we all need, to show, and we all need God to show us the right path in life. The men in our Bible lessons for today have been admired for a very long time now. But they're not worshipped, nor are they remembered as perfect people. But instead, they are remembered as people who love God 
and whose memory we should cherish because they put God's will before their own. And they rightfully gave God the credit for their successes. They never put themselves first. They remembered to give God the credit. And that's why we, we remember them and think so, so highly of them. And again, they did a good job because none of us worship them. We worship the one they pointed to, Jesus Christ. Again, it's important to have successors because none of us live forever. For those of us who have already been confirmed or gone through some kind of new member class, then we need to view ourselves as both students and teachers, as protégés and mentors. We never stop learning. I always tell people, confirmation is not graduation. You don't know it all. <laughs> but you know, you know enough to now be able to share the gospel message. But we need to remember, again, we never stop learning. And God had always has something new to teach us. But at the same time, God has never stopped calling people to spread his message of love and mercy to the rest of the world. You and I share in the same mission as Elisha, as Peter, James, John, and Paul. We all share in that same mission. We are all successors like them. We, too, are called to let light shine out of darkness. We, too, are called to inform others that a loving and just God truly exists and that he is calling all of us to leave behind our selfish desires of this world behind and embrace the light of Jesus. Amen.
I write the congregation to please rise. With the whole church, we confess our faith using the words from the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel, proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean, deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For all who suffer this day, and we especially pray for those who are known to this congregation in need of your healing presence. For Elizabeth, Hilda, Susan, Geraldine, Irene, Mike, Martha, Mike, Sherry, Nelson, Sandra, Bob, and for all those we now name aloud or in our hearts. That Christ, our healer, transforms sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us, let us pray. And thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. 
By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of waters turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power of might, heaven on earth the full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, and mercy for our fallen world you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to, to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Ha have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Please be seated. body of Christ given for you and for me and in the Lord's body. The wings that you have made. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. body of Christ given for you. Do you want to switch? Should we switch places? The body of Christ given for you. The 
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. the congregation to please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen.
of Christ. 